New at 10, this month marks the 175th anniversary of the creation of the Wisconsin Center for the Blind and Visually Impaired. WMTV's Gabriella Rusk looks back on the history of this institution and looks ahead to the future for its students. The Great Gatsby. For Josiah Heeson. F. Scott Fitzgerald. Braille brings books to life. Different things like biographies and science fiction and stuff like that. At his school, Braille is how most students read and write. An actual class here because we learn Braille. Josiah started learning Braille as a boy from his grandma. She's been a Braille teacher for a very long time. And uh, she's blind as well, so she knows what it's like. And she knew to start teaching me at a young age. Karen Heeson is a teacher at the Wisconsin School for the Blind and Visually Impaired. Well, it's pretty much like teaching reading and writing in a regular school, except we do it with Braille instead of with print. Karen has fond memories of her time as a student. I like this. Taking lessons from blind and visually impaired teachers who inspired her own career. I love my job. This is what I wanted to do. <laughs> While new technology has improved how students study over the years. All kinds of services that we provide. She says the vision for this school is the same as it was 175 years ago. The mission has always been about helping boys and girls achieve the independence and dignity that they can have and be able to go out and be constructive citizens in, in our society. Founded in 1849, the Wisconsin Center for the Blind and Visually Impaired was the first public institution chartered by the state legislature. It's a huge honor to be a part of the school that has been around for 175 years. Elias Tyser says he loves being in a place where he feels understood. I feel like I connect with people better here than I did it with my old school. Didn't really have any friends there. And now he's making plans for life outside of school walls. Getting a job and working. With the help of the school's college and career readiness program. Just because I'm visually impaired doesn't mean I can't do things. According to the National Federation of the Blind, over 70% of blind or visually impaired adults in the U.S. are unemployed or underemployed. We're just people. We're just individuals like everybody else. Kelvin Hogan's enjoys connecting with his former school. You know, I get a feeling of calm because it is. It's like, you know, going back home. He now works for the Division of Vocational Rehabilitation at the Department of Workforce Development to help people who are blind and visually impaired find work. To help them obtain, maintain, um, and, you know, to simply be successful in their employment. Students showcasing their success. We're human beings. We're, you don't have to treat us differently. We do require different things to get the job done, but we get the job done. Thanks to generations of equal education. I'm glad that the school is here. I'm glad it was here for me. I'm glad it's here for my grandkids. In Janesville. And I hope we'll be here a long time. Gabriella Rusk, WMTV 15 News. The Wisconsin School for the Blind and Visually Impaired is also a residential school. About 20 students live in the dorms during the week and then go home to their families on the weekends. And the Rock County Historical Society has quite the archive of photos from the school over the years. You're looking at just a few of them right here. Many of these images are donations from private collections. The, HC, the RCHS director says you might never know what treasures are hiding in your family photo album or scrapbooks. Those things are so powerful. They tell the story. They give dates and names that people do um, and are able to quickly weave things together and make a broader story out of things. So we don't have to take them from you. We can borrow them, digitize them, and give them right back. And then it just keeps building this great bank of uh, and database of more information. Now, if you would like to see more of these historic images, we have a gallery posted right now on our website. There's also a timeline of the history of the school throughout the years. You can find that over on WMTV15news.com.